Hello my friends, welcome back to Legacy of the Void Real Scale. I am super duper excited to head on over to Olnar, but first we gotta take a look at the Solar Core and assim not assimilate, I was gonna talk about orbital assimilators, and adjust accordingly. So somebody put out a really, really good point. One of the reasons that I like orbital assimilators is because it effectively gives you six free supply per base. However, probes don't cost supply in this, so it does have a very nice upfront extra vest being given. However, it's not actually that great. It's definitely worse than in the base game, especially for now. Eventually, we're gonna need all the gas we can get. Orbital gas, probably gonna be pretty good then. But right now, I'm not really feeling it. Uh, one thing that I would like to test out a little bit is maybe a little bit of Chrono Surge. See how good that is. And actually, I'm gonna go back to Orbital Strike. Reason being is Solar Lance, it is absurdly powerful, but it actually is less flexible than Orbital Strike. There is an argument, particularly in the times where we're not fighting these big capital ships yet, that maybe we should go for that. Now I'm gonna put my remaining points into the Solarite subsystems, and we're gonna go check out our armies. That seems good. <laughs> yeah, this seems kind of fine. By the way, the uh, Annihilator got nerfed. It no longer has Hardened Shield. And the Immortal got buffed in the its Hardened Shield has been buffed. So the way that it used to work is you got hit by something and the shield would trigger. And uh, playtesters were apparently annoyed that it was hitting... Or rather, like a Marine was doing the whole thing. So now it has three charges that go one after another. The Immortal is going to be the bulky, like, ground destroyer. And I'm going to try it with uh, some Energizers and maybe Dragoon. Eee, we'll go Dragoons again. I didn't actually make any Stalkers last time. I just, I can't really justify it. They're not that good. We're going to get Phoenixes, though. Hello. <laughs> We're going to go for maybe a little bit of Immortal Phoenix. We'll see how it goes. I'm looking forward to this mission. This is where we get the Phoenix. I love the Phoenix. It's one of my favorite units. The Immortal is one of my favorite units too. I just, the Phoenix is so nimble and fun to control. The Immortal has those like powerful sounding shots. There's all the things that make me happy. Here lies the resting place of the Zelnaga. I wonder how big the Titanic Warp Prism is gonna be. Seal this access way if we are to awaken them. Grand Preserver. What do you know of the temple in the depths Okay, if we're just gonna stare at a door, I don't care. <laughs> Whoa, they're big! Look at that! <laughs> How much do they cost? Oh, let's go uh over here. 275, 125. Not too bad. How much damage do they do? Whoa. Whoa, that's a lot of damage. Can we talk about this mini-map? Holy <laughs> <laughs> okay, I knew that Olnar is where things were going to start getting a little bit mental. There's uh, one, two Void Rays, two Battle Cruisers, a third Void Ray, four Colossus, and a Carrier. That's going to be tough. Let's see if we can do it. Hmm. Okay, here we go. I'm going to try to get my economy going up real quick. The Graviton Beam has a 15 second cooldown, so actually we're getting less Graviton Beams than normal, which is interesting. We could, oh, look at how fast they are. Whoa! <laughs> this is insane. How, how do the Phoenixes do against a scout? I'm gonna assume they win the fight because they're amazing. Wow. Really good against medium. The scout is medium, makes sense. And the scout is anti-large. So yeah, we can take those down without a problem. Phoenix feeling pretty good. Alrighty. And for anyone who's saying that the size is wrong on this, absolutely not. This is the cockpit right here. You can fit a zealot right in there. It does appear that that is pretty darn accurate to me. Uh, and then, here we go, let's, let's economy. I do like the monies. Ooh, there's another gas geyser at this base. That's really nice. Oh, 
okay. Well, that's saturation. <laughs> well, it's not quite, but we're getting there. Is this just Phoenix the movie? This might just be Phoenix the mission the movie on ice. We're just gonna get all these guys into position. They're gonna hit us pretty soon. I think we're gonna have to start playing zoomed out like this. Get a couple zealots to help out over here. Got that Nexus Overcharge that can blast some stuff for me. And here we go. Kinda wanna zoom it a little bit. There we go. I think that's a pretty reasonable level right now. And we're gonna get some gateways in order to make sure that I can spend my minerals as well. I have a feeling we can get gas capped. And we will get a forge. Because there's actually something that I wanted to talk about. That I find very fascinating and very clever. But we do need we do need a pylon for it. Okay, 275, 125, and 3 supply. Honestly, it's not that expensive. And it builds pretty quick. I'm I'm really feeling the Phoenix right now. I do think that as we move away from light units or medium units that we fight, it'll probably end up being a worse unit. But right now, that's pretty good. The Tauberine have deployed a titanic warp prism. That is truly a warp prism, isn't it? Oh, it's lovely. If possible, we should destroy it. We're gonna try to clear this map, by the way. Probably fail. We'll probably uh, get kicked by the game, told, no, we don't do that here, and then have to scurry away to the next mission with our tails behind our legs, but we're going to try. And that's that's what matters. Yoda would be really pissed about that, but we're, it's okay. Yoda's a nerd anyway. I'm not sure what to do with my Chrono Surge now. Maybe just get upgrades. The upgrades aren't that expensive compared to the units. But they do take a lot of time, and you cannot build extra production buildings to speed up unit production. Here comes that attack. Lift the Reapers. <laughs> oh gosh, that must be terrifying. Imagine being lifted by this phoenix just right up next to you. Oh, <laughs> that's so good. Oh my. Like when it's a it's a normal sized one, it just it kind of feels like I don't know, more normal. But being this little tiny man that's being lifted up by a spacecraft that's so big. Oh it's wonderful. I love this game. I love real scale. I'm having a lot of fun. But first, before we have any more fun, we gotta talk about our friend, the Kaidaran Monolith, which has been nerfed. But Orca did it in such a clever way. So he thought that uh, you could just, they were a little bit too much density of them. And he wanted to remove that issue, but he didn't want to make it strictly a worse thing. So what did he do? He took it and he made it a 4x4 four four structure instead of 3x3, three three, which already on its own is clever. However, what he did on top of it is my favorite part. He said, oh, well, I want the, how do we give an advantage to the person that is, or not an advantage, but how do we make it a little bit worse than just being a range increase? I don't want it to just be like, oh, it's super fat now. So what he did was he made sure that the actual physical bodies were small enough that despite these connecting, probes and other small units can still pass through them. This means when you're actually working on your static defense stuff, it is more convenient to have Kaidaran monoliths around because you can actually navigate through them instead of getting your workers stuck. This is such an elegant way to take something that you think is a little bit too strong and make it less strong, but at the same time, not less convenient, not more frustrating to the players. It is so convenient to be able to do that. And it's going to make missions like the one we just did so much easier when your probes can just move through these. Uh oh, here we go. Get out of here, sir. 
lift all these guys up. I actually do want to test one thing. Can we fit a probe through this, like right here? Yeah, see? So even if you have it uh, flush against other static defense structures, it is still increased mobility for the probe. It makes your life easier, but it's not overpowered. I love it so much. I love it so much. People are getting, honestly, a lot more clever than Blizzard ever was when it came to balances. <laughs> like, Blizzard would probably just be like, eh, minus two range, done. And this is just, I don't know, I love it. it. When he said it to me, I was just like, everything about this is genius. And I'm so proud of him. We're getting all this stuff up and going. This is going to be Orca's, like, last hurrah as a mod. He, uh, unfortunately has to go live a real life now instead of just being a modder for all of eternity, which is a darn shame if you ask me. <laughs> Why would you ever do such a thing? But, you know, everybody has their priorities in life, and he absolutely just killed it with this mod. He's putting so much of his blood, sweat, and hopefully not many tears into this. And I'm really, really enjoying it. It's so polished. We're going to start moving out pretty soon. I'm just, I'm so concerned about the end of the mission. About all this stuff that we have to kill. I love how nimble the Phoenix is. It can cross the entire map in like seven seconds. That is, <laughs> I forgot how big void rays were. But you know what? Spear of a Dune, pretty darn good. Move over here, try to take this stuff down. See if we can move that up. Take the raven out. And then those guys will rebuild. The raven missile may have been able to kill them, but not permanently. Let's go over this way. Start taking stuff. I actually wonder what's going to be easier to deal with, the carriers or the battle cruisers. My mind is telling me the carriers are actually what I want to fight. Reason being is that I should be able to mow through the interceptors with the power of these Phoenix, right? On the other hand, the battle cruisers are going to have so much armor. I'm going to start getting some dragoons as well. I'm actually flooded with gas. This extra gas geyser is, it's a lot. It's really appreciated, but I am not going for the right composition to spend it all. Take this down. So I'm just checking how well these phoenixes do against the Void Ray, and my thought is actually they did pretty well there. They took a while to kill it, that is definitely true. However, they did not take too much damage of their own. Oh, must suck to be a Banshee pilot. For this one, we're going to fire another volley. Take it down. And continue to warp in. Oh, like Raid's doing harassment attacks. Look at that. Goodbye. I was going to make Dragoons and I forgot. It's okay. We're doing fine. I can uh, use that. Oh, oh. Then I can use that to make a probe and make a permanent... <laughs> I love that ability. The Nexus, it's just the convenient stuff like the Nexus being able to warp in the probe. It's so good. Why can't you just do that in the base game, honestly? Not like multiplayer necessarily, but I mean, in the campaign, it's great. Lift all these up. Continue to try to build up. One thing I noticed about the Phoenix is it's so supply light for what you're getting. Oh, this is going to be a beautiful shot. This is going to be art. Ooh, get wrecked. Then this isn't even going to get to unmerge. Then we have to jet across the entire map to defend. But I think we can. Because the Phoenix are so fast. Yep, here they are already. Lift up the tanks. And we really didn't lose much here. Gonna rebuild this gateway. It does a great job at soaking the shots. And we are going to keep moving. Oh gosh, it's so scary. 
we have to use the Phoenix to take out the Colossus before we move in with the infantry. Otherwise, everything is going to die. So we're going to redo the control groups. Here's a Void Ray. Let's see, they're at 222. We're doing well. Another Void Ray. But we're really just getting it. Taking them down. Oh, this is the first, like, real scale battle that we've had. One thing in, like, real scale wings, I didn't actually think that these medium sized ships were too good. But the Phoenix just, it feels great because of how nimble it is. I feel like I can move it through when I need to. Oh, here comes the carrier. So we are going to start pushing in. Hopefully we can take down these interceptors. How powerful is a carrier versus all of this? I'm afraid to learn the answer here. Oh, we gotta move back. The Terran are getting restless. This guy's getting multi-missiled, so we're just gonna bring him over. These are doing great. I'm actually gonna get another Stargate. I'm so happy with the Phoenix. I love it. It's my baby boy. Oh, you gonna attack? Good try. Maybe I could chrono some Phoenix out. Nah, that's a waste. I think at this point, we need to just hold off everything that we have for these orbital strikes. Being able to hit those big things. Remember, the carrier has 20,000... That's so many freaking Colossus. A carrier's got 20,000 HP, right? 10,000. That's still a lot. <laughs> oh... I'm gonna have to like rebind my zoom in, zoom out keys to something more convenient for the rest of this campaign. I have it to page up, page down, and that's just not enough, is it? It's too out of the way. All right, we're gonna chrono surge him. Just get a huge army, and hopefully not run out of cash. I'm running out of cash. Hopefully, chrono surge runs out. Hopefully, it's not too good. <laughs> oh, perfect timing. Let's ignore that two of my gateways were not producing for the entire... Two of my Stargates were not producing for the entire time. Because I couldn't afford it. Okay, this is 35 Phoenixes. We're going to see how they do. Uh, goodbye. It's an air superiority fighter, so I want to be the superior in the air. And I want to fight. Now, be careful of the Archon. I don't think we can lift that. We probably should be able to, right? Actually, we might be able to lift the Archon. Yeah. We can totally lift Archons because they're small. Why wouldn't we be able to? They're not large. Not in this mod. That's hilarious. Used to, in uh, the launch edition of Wings of Liberty, you used to be able to lift Archons, even multiplayer, because they were not massive at the time. There was... It was actually quite a while before they became massive. I remember the first match that I ever saw of them play... Or of uh, massive Archons was Artosis versus Grubby in the NASL. It was like right after the patch went through that made him massive and someone used it to bust through force fields and everyone was like, oh, that's exactly what we thought would happen when this patch went through. It, it wasn't a surprise at all, but <laughs> it was it was neat because it was Artosis versus Grubby and everybody loves both of them. Grubby is a person. I really hope that like people like him come into Stormgate when it comes out. We always talk about, like, the StarCraft people, but Grubby is just one of the best humans on the planet. For people who don't know, he's arguably top one or two greatest Warcraft 3 players of all time, and he's also just, like, the epitome of just wholesome, great person. And I really hope that with Stormgate stuff like that, it'll draw some of the amazing people from other RTS scenes, you know? That would be great. Just have one super community where all the best people are. 
I would be so happy. And it's not just me fanboying, I promise. It is partially me fanboying. But it's not only that. Alright, let's go engage the carrier. Gotta... Oh. Target it. So we gotta get through the shields first, and then we have to knock our way through the hangars. Uh-oh. These hangars seem very durable. Oh, no. We're gonna have to pull back. See, I know this is like, Grant, why are you doing this? You don't have to. But I need to learn how to fight capital ships. And this is kind of my time to do that. Like, right there, I learned that... I probably need the power of Orbital Strike in order to engage that. At least with what I have right now, probably Void Rays or something like that to put more focused fire on the hangars would be a great way to go. But the Phoenix, they don't do enough punching power. Seven armor on that hangar is mechanical and large, which means that my Phoenix are doing 15 or so per shot, which is pretty good, but when they have 3,500 HP, it's not that great. But I'm going to save up for an orbital strike, and then we're going to see exactly how it is there. Let's see if we can take this down. I think the carrier is uniquely vulnerable. Okay. Okay, we can move the camera during all this. Thank goodness. <laughs> I was concerned for a moment. So we're going to have to get over there. And then we will use the Spear of a Dune targeting to blast through as many of the hangars as we can. Hopefully what that means is that the the interceptors associated with those hangars will be destroyed. Okay. So we're going to zoom out. And then we can... Air targeting is always hard. You can look, if you look at the hangars, there definitely needs to, like, to be a slightly better interface to tell... If you're actually getting them, I think that this is a ton of them right here. So what happened? We took down a lot of them. And that means that the interceptor count is lower. So we're able to take down the other hangers with less resistance. One more hangar to go. I have 19 phoenixes and the interceptor count you can just see is not as many as it was before. And boom! First carrier killed by us. Like, legitimately killed. I'm happy. That was a that was an interesting fight. I, uh, the hardpoint system really adds a bunch of strategic depth to... Where'd he go? <laughs> it adds a lot of strategic depth to it. I'm going to say it again. Um... These are great. Oh, actually, it's just not shooting. Come on. Fine. Oh, no! What? What's going on? Why is it? <laughs> Something's bugging out, I think. Oh, either that or it's just real high in the sky. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, we'll have this fixed before public release. I'm being attacked by invisible battle cruisers. <laughs> How do I win? No, don't you model it? I need that. Oh gosh, that's the invisible void ray too. Okay, this is bad. This is really bad. <laughs> this is why I do stuff like try to attack the base. I'm 99% sure that somehow killing the carrier is what triggered everything to break here. And probably with his alpha testers, the very initial people, they probably didn't do that because why would you waste your time? Let's try to kill this Invisivoid. We got it. <laughs> That's so good. The, guy just, the battle cruise is just like, I'm going into orbit, bro. They can't attack us from there. Yeah, I can't do anything about it. It's too strong. I guess I can try to rebuild this. Maybe I can recover. No, look at that. <laughs> so many missiles. <laughs> this is great. 
<laughs> okay, we're gonna load. We're gonna. Oh, this mission has no auto saves. I forgot. Blizzard is incompetent. No. Okay, we're gonna try to win the mission then. Like, we're gonna reset. We're not gonna. We learned how to fight capital ships. This was really interesting information for the future. It is going to save me a lot of pain. I do think that Solar Lance has a big advantage because it has the ability to selectively target stuff. We've also learned that I think that when you're targeting with a Spear of a Dune ability on a capital ship hardpoint, the uh, visual indicator exists. However, it is tough to see. Those are the, my opinions right now for how things are going. I would like to have uh, maybe like ha something like the... Uh, just a unique icon or something popping up to show you exactly that you're targeting it. Or maybe like the cube changes color to red when you have a Spear of a Dune ability targeted on it. That could be an interesting way to do it. It's easy to see on the stuff that is facing you. However, on the other side of the ship, could definitely use a little help. All in all, amazing system. Absolutely adore it. Uh, just the visual stuff could be improved and that's, it's not that much work. The work is 99.9% .9 done at this point with that system, and it is so cool. I love the fact that I have to think about different capital ships, too, right? Like, I'm going to be able to learn all the various hard points, figure out what I want to target down first, what's important, what isn't as important. For example, the Battlecruiser, remember, it has air-to-ground batteries and air-to-air -air batteries, so you can really just kind of flip around what you need to take down. Is the Yamato that important? Are you using a bunch of small stuff? Are you using one big thing? Can the big thing soak the Yamato? Is it worth taking down the, the anti-ground batteries, for example, and letting one of your air units soak a Yamato and just live? I don't know, but I'm really, really excited to test. Oh, this is good. This is so good. Oh my goodness. Like, I knew it was going to be good. I It was obvious it was going to be good as soon as I heard about how it was going to work. And yet, I'm still just absolutely blown away constantly. We are going to Chrono Surge. Make all the probes, sending them to work. Go, go, go. Oh. Forces are inbound to our nexus point. They're attacking us. Uh, oh yeah, I made some of these last time and it worked out just fine. No, I made Zealous last time. I'm going to retreat these guys is what I actually want to say and let the Nexus Overcharge help out because it seems like it does a ton of damage. 50. Yeah, so Nexus Overcharge is great against these smaller units. Uh, completely useless against capital ships, especially if they're invisible. One, two, three. One, two, three. And one, two. I'm excited for Orca's developer comments in the YouTube comments about uh, the invisible capital ships. I am putting it 50-50 between, Grant, what did you do and how did this happen? And, oh no, this bug is back. <laughs> it's definitely one of the two. And there's no in between. It's either completely my fault or it has been driving him crazy for months. And I'm excited to see which is the case. Okay, what I do need to remember is in this actual clear, I have to take down the Titanic Warp Prism once again. That is an MVP target. If I don't take it down again, then I don't get my Solarite, even though I did it before. Uh-oh. If only one of these were a Kaidaran Monolith, I could slip through. You know what? Oh, doesn't fit. A Titanic warp prism. If its core is similar to our own, the reactor is made of pure solarite. If possible, we should destroy it and claim the reactor to enhance... So we can just slip... Yeah, we can put probes through here! <laughs> it's so good! <laughs> it's the simple things in this game where they... J you know, people just thinking about, oh, hey, what would make it a little bit more fun and smooth to play? Because RTS is hard, man! It takes so many buttons and actions and it's so fiddly a lot of the time. And then Orca's just like, yeah, you can go through, no problem. It's just that. I'm not asking for the world, and Orca has given me more than I ask for. In a good way. See, if Orca had coded these probes, they probably would have been much more efficient. Time 
Lifty lift. Come on over. All right, zap it. Uh oh, these are not well placed. <laughs> it's just barely out of range. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, you win some, you lose some. Yeah, I'm a little bit afraid about going and taking mid because I remember the void ray. And I want to avoid the void for as long as possible. Then again, it wasn't that bad of a fight. I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of rushing this time to get everything up and together, and I don't want to be too bold. I want to make sure that I'm immune to these counterattacks, for example. Get a cannon here and a cannon here, so that I can still move my workers through if need be, but if they come from this side and get pulled by the Kaidaran Monolith, then the cannons will be there to help tank a little bit. And again, the monoliths are pretty chonky. They're not that vulnerable. Let's go over here. Just check out what these Tald Rim are doing with their lives. Nothing useful, it seems. I feel like the Phoenix is quite a good support unit in this game. Because it actually can contest the strike craft like the destroy not the destroyer the the void ray but it also is real good against the ground units it's cheap it's mobile it kind of has everything going for it the only thing it's not really good against is the capital ships and this doubles down for example if we were fighting thors it might not be as good however the colossus of course can be shot by it so that is a pretty big advantage for the phoenix and against something like an Ultralisk, it would be pretty pathetic. But we're not fighting those here. Yeah, I don't know what that Wraith's story is, but... Hi. No problem. Hey, I just took this. Let's uh, retake that. Get a couple more pylons down on my area, and now I'm gonna go for the Titanic Warp Prism. I'm gonna go for the middle, all that good stuff. The Dragoons provide some pretty good support power for the Phoenixes as well, because their anti-air range is so long. I think at this point I feel pretty good on my Phoenix count. Oh, this is gonna be a pain. Here. <laughs> Get a Kundalard, nerd. I don't see a void right here. Ah, oh, it's over here. The first orbital is so great. Oh, no, 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 the Dragoons. The Dragoons. It's fine. So we have Energizers, we have Phoenixes. And then a lot of Dragoons to keep the Energizer safe and keep warping it over here. What do we want? Kaidaran Monolith over here. Probably just one of them. And we're going to see how this fight goes. Oh. Amon's servants are moving to seize a lock. Receiving. Do I do it? Yeah, you gotta do it. It's just too strong. Then we can take this down before it deploys. Beautiful. We're gonna charge the Colossus with some of these guys in order to just spread out where our Zealots are. Wait. Colossus have minimum range in this mod, don't they? LOL! LOL! Get wrecked! You can't hit me! <laughs> Outplayed, nerd. Get out of here. Where'd you learn to StarCraft? Elementary school? Alright, I'm supply blocked. I may have also learned to StarCraft in elementary school. It doesn't matter, I'm having fun. 
I don't know what we killed over there, but it's probably worth a shot. That is number two. We're gonna get some... Let's just get another one of these. These are amazing. They deal with everything that I find scary in life. That's not true. Social interactions, it doesn't deal with those for me. Picking up the phone from an unknown caller. Having to call someone? No, it doesn't do a lot of things that are scary, actually. Yeah, okay, we could definitely buff the Kaidaran monolith. Could it please, like, file my taxes? It's like 80% of the way there, though. I think three of these is going to be enough. My evidence? Don't have any. <laughs> I'm going to extra pile on it, though, because... Yeah, I didn't block... Yeah, because it just goes through. I was like, oh, I might have blocked it over here. No, no, it just... It sneaks. It sneaks. It's so good. Oh. Excuse me, sir. Uh, I'm going to go... I'm going to go lift you, because you're a jerk. And you need to stop this. The charge time is so long. It really kind of looks like the Kaidaran monolith is just... It, like, doesn't notice the enemy because it's so small. <laughs> and it's like, oh, we should get that guy. I see him now. I got my Kaidaran glasses on. Let's try to finish off this Terran stuff before it gets too cray, you know? Okay, that was solar, right? Okay, pick up this. They are never gonna have any chill there, are they? That is what the monolith is for. This area doesn't seem so bad. It's got a lot of banshees and stuff, and the banshees just... I don't know. Not scary. I think it's one of the units that feels the least impactful in real scale. Compared to how it does in the normal game where they just... They mow through everything, you know? But they're just kind of normal here. Lift up the tank. Swing on in. There's the Thor. Have to be very cautious around that. I'm going to target it down with the ground troops. Ignore everything else. Just make sure that that anti-air fire support is dealt with. And then we can move in with the Phoenix and validate all of these siege tanks, which is going to allow the Dragoons to move in and take the point. We can turn into an energy field, grab some guys, and that was not too bad. All in all, I had a lot of fun there. Really, really good mission. Really a joy. Couple things that need to be fixed, like the accidentally removing themselves from reality capital ships. But what you gonna do? This is beta testing, and it the game was still completely playable. The Phoenix feels great. Capital ships feel great. I feel great, and I hope that you feel great. Until tomorrow, guys, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you then. Peace.